What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Cork to Glory, this is episode number 30. And we start today's episode off with the big one, perhaps the biggest game of the series so far. Liverpool away at Anfield against Jurgen Klopp's side and I literally could not wait for this timeline. Ever since it was drawn, I just couldn't wait. Just like last year when we found out we had Jose Mourinho Spurs in the last 16. At the end of the day, like, as the draw was made, I was like, okay, that's where our progress ends. We're not going to have a giant killing. We're not going to cause a massive upset. We're not going to go through. But it's just really cool to face one of the big boys in England, you know, just see how you get on with a team that is still growing every single month. It's just kind of cool to be challenged like that, you know. So, yeah, for the first game of today's episode, it was our trip to Anfield. You would have seen more lineup as well. There were some stars out there, but once again, as it came in midweek on Tuesday night, I did throw some backup players out there as well. Just because, again, the championship right now, we're still pushing for an outside shot of the playoffs. So, didn't want to have everyone unfit for the game on the weekend. But the Reds would take the lead. Uh, funny enough, it was a former Spurs player that got the goal. The former Real Madrid and Spurs midfielder, Luka Modric, uh, giving Klopp's side the very early advantage of the Croatian fires that passed the former Liverpool goalkeeper uh, Kelleher and we had a golden chance as well 21 minutes in and Dylan McGlade was running through down the left hand side I just couldn't hit the target as I squeezed it wide of the post and I guess what could have been right because a few minutes later Colley made it 2-0 and that was how the game finished as well so yeah I knew we'd lose I knew we'd go out final score was 2-0 Liverpool progressed through to the last eight and into the quarterfinals and unfortunately our progress ends during the last 16 as we all knew it would when we the draw was made regardless but again what could have been had I taken that chance on the glade I mean I say what could have been I'm pretty sure we've lost anyway but either way we're out but still great to get to the last 16 for the second straight season and um, regardless of the league table as you can see in 11th place right now with 11 games to go 9 points behind the Cherries and the Robins in 5th and 6th place in the playoffs we're also only 11 points behind Stoke City uh, in 4th place as well so we have got a great shot at making the playoffs if we keep what has been a decent second half the season run going and you look at our fixtures here for March as well Blackburn Luton um, Millwall our first game of the lot as well uh, Rotherham I think Coventry are the other team we got in this month as well we've got some really favourable fixtures coming in this month of March and I'll be honest here out of those five games we should be targeting at least four wins out of those five and that would really put the pressure on the teams above us right now so we've got an excellent chance of keeping ourselves in the race of the playoffs and you know the start of the season I talked about as I run you through the academy here um, I talked about it you know the playoffs there was always an outside shot of that happening, but it was a very unlikely. It was like a 5% chance. It could still happen, but... I knew that for me, just securing stability in the championship and not being in a relegation dogfight was the most important thing. You know, looking at the bottom three now and so many points being clear at the bottom three right now, I don't see us getting dragged into a relegation dogfight. I'll be absolutely stunned if somehow in our final 11 games, we we're right now on the bottom of the table and struggling to keep our heads above water. We should be safe regardless, but now we are within touching distance of those playoffs. Again, only nine points behind Bournemouth and uh, Bristol City. I want to get there, man. I would absolutely love to have playoff football at Turner's Cross for the first time since the series began after back-to-back -back promotions. And regardless of the first league game of today's episode on the back of the loss away at Anfield, taking on the Lions, Millwall, as the lads from the den were coming to us on here at Turner's Cross. We had the early running, uh, early chance in the game. Uh, Leo Yates had in that corner just wide the post. It was still 0-0. But we stayed in attack mode right from the very first whistle. I knew that first goal was coming, and we get it as well. 11 minutes for the break. Eamon Cunningham, he has been so good this season, man. Bell Bell is our top scorer, but Cunningham has chipped him up a lot this season. I believe he's already in double digits. So, great finish there on the one-on-one. -on -one. Keeps composure as our number eight gives us the lead and seven minutes after three start a chance to make it two and we would as well Elliot would cross into the middle Bell Bell with the volley but sadly the goal was ruled out for offside in the end and you know Bell Bell is why well, I haven't actually mentioned it this much this season but you would have seen very briefly when I show you the top score charts he's got an outside shot at winning the Golden Boot. I think Jao Pedro and Tyrese Campbell are the two front runners for the Golden Boot right now, but Bell Bell is not that many goals behind. That would have been a big one there, would have wrapped up the points, and yeah, we didn't need it. 1 0 the final score, and back to winning ways, even without that goal counting. But for the third of five games in today's episode, traveling to the New York Stadium to take on Rotherham United here as we'd face the Millers. We fell behind very early on in this game, and I know I say it every single episode, and I sound like a broken record, but. There's just something about playing in England, and in the case of Cardiff and Swansea in Wales as well, where for some reason, I just, well first of all, I don't feel confident heading to the game anyway, regardless of where the teams are in the table right now, bottom three, bottom half, or wherever. 
But it's also as well, for some reason, I feel like my players just... I know it's a psychological thing. I feel like my players just, like, have an overall decrease. Because we had a golden chance in the second half to get back on level terms in that game. In the end, it finished 2-0 uh, to the Millers. Rotherham getting a big three points there. But, yeah, Belbo had that golden chance. And, you know, nine times out of ten, in Ireland, that finds the back of the net. That's 1-1. One, one. But there at the New York Stadium, couldn't even hit the target as he smashed it wide at the post. And once Rotherham got that second goal, that was it. It was over. And yet another defeat away in England, man. We just cannot win games away from Turner's Cross. It's been the story of this season, really. And so for our, for our fourth game of today's episode here, uh, taking on Luton Town away at Kenilworth Road, of course, they came up with us last season. Us and Barnsley, uh, obviously the top two, and then Luton got promoted via the playoffs as well. I've got to be honest here, this game was absolutely fantastic. Thrilling. We took the lead for a wonderful assist through Bell Bell and Cunningham with the finish, making it 1 0. The Hatters would then find their leveller. Four minutes after the restart, we're back in front. It's that man again who right now just can't stop scoring. Eamon Cunningham with his third goal in three games restores our lead right after the restart, but directly after that goal. I mean, I knew the game was not going to be over after that one. Loire, Loire dribbling past Seamus Curry, offloads to Collins, just could not get the ball off the Hatters right on the edge of our area. There's like two or three chances to make the tackle as Morel drills it in so our lead gone once again so for the second time in the game Luton battled back to equalise and then 12 minutes after their goal a chance for us to restore our lead Cunningham and Bell Bell in this game and their partnership was just amazing the, the through balls to one another was just glorious the link up play was wonderful to watch and again it's Bell Bell with the goal so Cunningham on fire right now if not scoring he's assisting the goal so back in front and then clinging on to a massive three points away from home and I believe only our third away win in the championship all season long. Deep into stoppage time. I don't know where the extra minute and 40 seconds came from. But Luton continued to press. Look for that late leveller. And they got it as well. James Bree with the finish makes it 3-3 in an absolutely thrilling game. Six goal thriller. Practically the final kick of the game as well. Right from kickoff the referee blows full time. And that is how the game would finish so yeah free free and a familiar feeling doesn't seem to matter how many leads we've got in our away days doesn't matter how well we've played how many goals we've scored just don't win just don't win in England man it just never ever happens for us you see here Bazunu, Cunningham and Keenan uh, going into national duty they're going to miss the final game uh, of today's episode uh, sorry uh, the, uh, the following game um, in the next episode against Coventry after this one here Blackburn Rovers away at Ewood Park but yeah it's just it's just typical man it's just, we score three goals at Luton we have three different leads on separate occasions and yet we still can't get the three points I, honestly man it just feels like whenever I'm playing away from home and I know it's a cycle thing I know it's I know it's not it's actually being the case but it just feels like the AI are far harder to play against regardless of where they are in a the table right now of Luton well below us and it feels like my players just no matter how well I'm playing with them just seems to have an overall decrease well and again I know it's psychological I know it's psychological I'm not blaming the game at all I know it's me but it is so so frustrating but for our final game of today's episode fifth and final game here traveling to Ewood Park's take on Blackburn Rovers here aiming to bounce back and finally notch up a win away in England well what a fan Fantastic start. Tommy Healy, the youngster at the academy, who's looked very good this season since we promoted him, as we know, has potential to be special. Uh, scores our first two goals in the first half, and then just past the hour mark, a chance to make it free. He was at the heart of everything in this game, the young man. Finds Eamon Cunningham with his fourth goal in four games. Our number eight right now is just on absolute flames. Blackburn nil, Cork City free on the hour mark, and I was thinking, right. If we don't win this game, man, if we don't win this game, that's it. I'm resigning. I'm fed up with this. So we're freeing it up away at Ewood Park. Surely the three points are in the bat. But I thought, you know what? We scored three at Kenilworth Road and didn't win. So let's get a fourth goal. Make sure we confirm it. Ten minutes to go. Ethan Elliott. Ryan Giggs regen. Well, possibly. He makes it four regards with a great finish there with the left foot. 4-0 Cork City and with five minutes on the clock. I, I kind of took out my frustration and vented my anger against Blackburn Rose in this game after the 3-3 free free draw against Luton. I was like, right, that's it. I'm going to score as many goals as I possibly can, man, and play lockdown defense. Nothing's getting past me. Eamon Cunningham scores our fifth goal and his second in the game. Five in four for our number eight right now, who is just, I wouldn't say carrying the team, but certainly our best player right now as he keeps us in the hunt for the playoffs. Massive win there, possibly our biggest win of the series, 4-0 away at Ewood Park. And that means with seven games to go, the gap is cut on Stoke City and Bristol City in fifth and sixth to eight points. And there is still a chance, despite what has been a very poor record away from home this season, that we could still make the playoffs. 
for the end of the season. That won't just the court to glory, guys. A big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode as we push for the playoffs in the penultimate episode of season three very soon.